Hi guys, uh, welcome to Spice World 2021. We are very excited to have you all here. And today we're going to speak about uh, a deep dive session into Cloud Help This. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the new upcoming features which are coming into the Help Desk and some of the changes we have made since the last Spice World. So speakers for this session are me and Ben Brookshire. Uh, I am the Associate Product Manager for IT Tools and Applications, and Ben is the Engineering Manager for IT Tools and Applications. I'm just going to give you a brief intro about what is Cloud Help Desk for our new users as well as our existing users. So uh, Cloud Help Desk basically allows you to easily manage your daily projects and user requests basically all in one spot. Uh, it'll host it for you and take care of backups and maintenance, giving you free time to focus on user issues and the concerns that they're having. It is really easy to set up and it, it is absolutely free. And what could have been simpler for sure. And on the right side in the pictorial, you see the architecture of the cloud help desk, how it seamlessly works for our users. Topics for today uh, would be uh, like we have made a lot of investments since last Spice World uh, on working on to some of the feature requests that our users had raised, as well as kind of uh, making upgrades to our front end as well as back end. So some of these include the migration strategy, the reporting, user postal, mobile tickets view, uh, desktop browser ticket view rewrite and Gen2 help desk mobile applications, a revamped version of our help desk mobile applications, and some of the performance improvements that we have pushed in through our releases. So you asked, we delivered. So on the right, you see a bunch of feature requests that were raised since last Spice World. And on the basis of spiciness index, uh, I'm sure you can see that it has been requested by a lot of users. So now we have changed our product development approach towards being user-centric and user-focused and keeping our users first. So every year we try to ensure that we update our IT tools based on the most requested features by our users. And some of the major updates which we are trying to push in and which we have already implemented uh, since the last five years world into our cloud help are advanced Power BI reporting, build-in reporting, which is web-based, the new user portal revamp, and all new mo mobile browser ticket view. Uh, and in coming soon, we have desktop browser ticket view and the new mobile apps Gen2, which you will see uh, a, a glimpse of it in the forthcoming slides as well. So quite excited about building products based on our user requests and kind of getting their concerns addressed. So here is the roadmap of our planned major releases. Uh, some of them I've talked about in the previous slide as well, but, uh, such as the iOS and Android mobile help desk. But uh, we're coming up with a integration with Intel Emma and in Inventory Online, uh, which would be a game changer. And also the complete redesign of the tickets web front end customized email templates, additional end user facing user portal customization, end user single sign on, and in the future about knowledge base migration and features, web front end unification, and kind of a deeper ecosystem integration with our inventory. So these are some of the features which we have already incorporated and some which you'll be really seeing soon. So gives you a glimpse of the roadmap which we have for our product. So here is an engineering vision. So I'll be basically on the right, you'll see the new revamped desktop ticket view rewrite. Uh, so we were trying to uh, not only uh, ensure seamless migration of our users from the legacy to the cloud help desk, but also make it to our front end and back end as well, uh, so that it gives you a seamless user experience and it, which cul culminated into the new desktop ticket view. And why we did that, uh, my partner Ben would be able to address this. I'll be talking a, a bit about the engineering vision we have for 2020 to 2021. On the right, you'll see the new desktop ticket view rewrite. So we've been trying to make ensure that the migration from desktop to the cloud help desk is seamless, as well as trying to uh, push some 
uh, upgrades uh, not in, into our back end as well as our front end as well uh, which would to together come up and culminate into the new desktop ticket view for the cloud help desk and pretty excited for some of the new uh, upgrades that we have pushed in as well as ensuring that migration is seamless and why we are doing this my partner ben would be able to ad address this some of you who maybe have been around for um, a couple of years or, or just since last year at spice world last year saw that we released the new power bi uh, advanced reporting kind of integration to allow you to do more um, more deep dive kind of reporting the ability to get closer to what we had in the legacy application which allowed uh, SQL so SQL reporting or um, running SQL queries to do advanced reporting. So that was last year. So since then, through the end of 2020 and into 2021, we focused on kind of cutting off any updates that we made to our web front end using the existing framework as we wanted to transition over to a new front end framework. Uh, so a new uh, web-based experience for you guys. And so through the end of 2020, we did a lot of research and uh, kind of proof of concept work and those sorts of things. And then in, as we entered 2021 and started to get into the spring, you guys started to see us release some features using that new framework. And that included the things that Siddharth has already mentioned, like the user portal update and the mobile web view. And we'll, we'll see some demos of those if you, if you guys haven't happened to see those already here. I'll, I'll share some of that. Um, but that's part of our strategy of um, reaching the point where we are today and, and through the end of this year where we target the primary uh, use case of the application, right? So that means where you as the IT pro spend most of your time. We wanted to first work our way through areas that you spend less time and are less kind of uh, core to the application and move towards areas that are very core to the application where you would spend 90 plus percent of your day. Um, as you interact with the application. So that's why we've kind of saved the best for last. We've, we've saved our work on the tickets interface for last. So that's in progress and you'll see a demo of that right now in our, in our presentation today as well. Um, and so you know, that's where we are right now. And then as we move forward, we'll complete our work on this tickets interface and then move towards um, additional features that we know will impact your ability to migrate if you're one of our desktop users. And then even further beyond that, we'll move towards um, building out features that are attractive both to folks that are migrating from the desktop application or folks that have never had a help desk application um, or people that are maybe looking to um, migrate from other applications and those sorts of things. So we'll shift focus and, and target features further out as you look into next year. Um, that's kind of what our, our strategy has been from an engineering perspective. Um, so I, I talked a lot about the features and the way that we release them and the order that we release them and, and sort of why we were doing it um, kind of underneath all of that, right? So one layer down is, uh, is our back end. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation too, um, about uh, a lot of effort that we put into the Cloud Help Desk's uh, back end over the course of 2020 and into 2021 as well. So that gives you a brief overview about what's coming. So now we have uh, the mobile applications. I've been talking about, we've been trying to do a re revamp of our mobile apps, both for iOS and Android. Uh, why we have been doing it? Because we want to enable a seamless migration of our users from legacy to cloud help desk, and also to provide a first class help desk experience for new and existing users. It'll be really revamped with additional new features such as the hybrid app, the push notifications, and it is this app would be available in both the platforms for iOS and Android and public alpha would be available for iOS and Android now at Spice World. So uh, you'll see some snippets about how the mobile app, the revamp version looks like. So yeah, here you can have a glimpse of, of some of the snippets we have from the uh, iOS version of our new help desk. So as you can have a glimpse of how it looks and with the push notifications features coming in, uh, you'll probably love this new sort of experience we have for, for you all for the mobile cloud help desk in the mobile version. So yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys engaged in the app and 
looking forward to how you guys see it and be quite excited to launch it. And here's the Android version of it. Uh, similar uh, features, exactly same for iOS and Android. So yeah, pretty excited for this. This is just a quick kind of run through of what you'll see uh, from the iOS side, at least, um, as you start checking out the alpha version of the application. So uh, we're using the test flight technology, which is a um, very common uh, thing for uh, testing applications with Apple. So you'll download the test flight application uh, when you get an invitation or um, a public link that allows you to interact with the help desk, it'll show up um, in the test flight application as an option to accept the invite or accept the application. And then once you've done that, you can download and install the help desk application from within the test flight application. So as opposed to what you would typically do where you'd go to the um, Apple App Store, this will show up within test flight. Um, once you've completed that install process, uh, what, what kind of the purpose of showing you these slides uh, or the, these screenshots is um, so you can see how, how easy it is to provide feedback for us as you check out the application. So test flight kind of walks you through it, but basically, as you probably already know, you can hit a couple buttons to take a screenshot while you're using the health desk application. And then you'll get a share modal that pops up right after you take a screenshot, you know, sort of as an opportunity to um, take that screenshot and do what you want with it. Well, one of the special options available via test flight is the ability to do share beta feedback. And so when you tap that button to share beta feedback, it allows you to um, overlay your screenshot with some text so you can type in whatever you want, let us know what's going on, what kind of problem you're experiencing, or if it's not a problem, but maybe just some feedback about what you'd like to see changed or added. You can type that in and then when you hit submit, it goes directly to us and your screenshot comes along with it. So it's a really quick and easy way for you, you know, if you're on the go just trying to do something and something doesn't work the way you want it to or, or you catch something kind of um, wider in the middle of something else, it's really easy to quickly type in some feedback and hit submit and that'll come straight to our development team so we can take a look at um, uh, what you were seeing at the time and then uh, whatever uh, text that you typed in. So it's a great way to um, submit feedback uh, as, you're, as you're checking things out during this alpha period. So. Uh, like Siddharth mentioned, um, it's available now and we'll get you some more information on that if you don't already have it. You can ask us at the Q&A at the end of this session. And um, if you have any uh, feedback, please do submit that. We'll, we'll keep working through this alpha period. We'll eventually get to the point where we're at a beta, we're more feature complete, where more, more of the features are in place, especially push notifications which aren't in place yet. Uh, and then we'll do a typical release so you would no longer need test flight after uh, after we've completed the beta period and we'll go to the app store, just like every other app you download. We're pretty excited about this thing and also we'll appreciate your feedback because we want to, we are constantly trying to make improvements and performance upgrades into our products. So the more feedback we get from you guys, the better products we'll have for you all. So now Ben would give you a demo of some of the things we have talked about today. So I've got the cloud health desk up in a couple different formats here so we can take kind of a quick look at everything. So this is the tickets interface as you know it right now. Um, if you're brand new to the application and maybe, um, or, or maybe you're migrating from your legacy application, I wanted to quickly just show you what that looks like because that's changed since last year as well. So let's say you don't have any tickets yet. You're just setting up a new account because you're migrating from the, from the um, legacy desktop application. You'll come in and do a couple of quick initial setup steps. And then if you go to settings, you'll see the information about the new organization that you just created in the Cloud Help Desk. It'll show up here on the left. You can tap on that or click on that and then go to import export tickets. And that's gonna allow you to upload a JSON file. So what is this JSON file? Well, that's a file that you've exported out of your legacy application. And we've got some documentation on how to do that. You can also use the web interface there to do it. So we've made it pretty easy. So the short version is you, on your legacy app, you do an export, it gives you this JSON file, and then you come over here in this screen that you're seeing in the Cloud Help Desk, you click um, File Upload and you upload that JSON file, and then you'll see some logging information, and you can see I've just done it um, in, the, in the not too distant past here. You'll see some logging information if you tap on Import Log, and you can see the current status of the import. So initially it'll say Pending Import, and then it'll show progress as it's importing. And once it's completed, you'll see end of import um, and you'll see some messages like this. So once that's completed, uh, you'll see your tickets will appear in the Cloud Help Desk. So that includes um, all of the tickets that were exported out of your legacy application. So if you click over 
Uh, to the tickets interface, again, uh, you'll see that same view that we just saw um, where a list of your tickets will show up. So rather than having just one or two demo tickets, you'll actually have the full list of tickets that you exported from the legacy desktop application. And um, like I said, there's documentation on some of the specifics here. You can do um, you can do what's called ticket matching, and that ensures that the IDs of your tickets from your legacy application have matching IDs in the Cloud Health Desk, Cloud Health Desk application. So specifically what that means is, in this example, we're looking at ticket number 22. Um, that would ensure that ticket number 22 from your legacy application is ticket number 22 in the Cloud Health Desk, so you don't have any numbers changing as you, as you migrate over. And that'll make it simple if you have a plan for migration and you'll have a cutover day where you have some tickets that are actually still in progress. You don't want to have too much confusion where the ticket number changes and you're not sure, was I working, was ticket number 22, ticket number 24 in, in the old help desk versus in the new help desk and those sorts of things. So I really tried to put some effort into simplifying the process of migrating um, and making it uh, you know, faster and less confusing for you guys as you're, as you're looking to migrate. So that's a quick overview of the migration process and, and the current interface. Um, for those that are, are maybe new, um, there's there's definitely still some areas of the application that were that are pending uh, that upgrade that I was referring to earlier. And so you can still see the original dashboard, which shows you some information about your tickets. This is kind of some high-level reporting. But one of the things that we've revamped since the um, since last year is a more um, kind of uh, middle ground on reporting. So you've got real high level reporting here on the dashboard. We gave you very advanced reporting in the Power BI integration. And then what, we've, what you've got today is a more middle ground. So uh, it's a web-based reporting interface that gives you some of the flexibility that you might want to get a little bit more information than you might get out of that dashboard without giving you all of the flexibility that you would get out of the Power BI um, advanced reporting interface. So. This interface um, is, is actually a little bit of a preview of how you're going to see the new tickets interface that I was talking about, which is where you're going to spend most of your, most of your time uh, as you're working tickets. So again, so this is your reporting interface. It's got kind of familiar things. You've got a drop down that allows you to select from uh, report views that you may have created. So let's just create one real quick so you can get a sense of how this works. So let's add some filters to maybe filter on a certain creator. So how about Janine? Let's focus on Janine's tickets. And I'll apply those filters. And you should see the list of filters reduced down. Janine's only open one ticket. And we can save this filter. So we want to come back and be able to review Janine's tickets later. And once that's saved, you'll see a new entry appear here on the left side. Um, that's a quick look, and, and once you've got some, um, maybe some more advanced filters in place and, and you've saved those filters as, as reports, you can export the contents of, of the report out into CSV and JSON formats. So if you want to do a dump of what those tickets look like, um, that's an easy way to do that. Um, we've also still got the existing interface that you are more familiar with, the older interface, uh, that allows you to do a full ticket export uh, to XLSX format, which is the format that's used by Power BI. So that Power BI integration um, is still functional and still in place. And actually, if you flip back and forth between these two tabs, the reports and exports tabs, you can actually see, get, you can get an update on um, when the last time you ran that XLSX export so that you could do that dump to Power BI. So that's kind of the state of reporting in the Cloud Help Desk today. So that's a quick kind of overview and demo there. Um, Another thing we want to show is um, something else that we completed. So the um, mobile web view is, is a, a way to access the Cloud Help Desk on a mobile device without using the mobile applications. So specifically, you could open up Chrome or Safari um, on your iOS device or open up Chrome or other browsers on your Android device. And the Cloud Help Desk is automatically going to detect that you're accessing the interface from a different device type um, and it's going to give you a different interface so flip over to that you can see a demo of what that looks like so here's the web view as it would show on an iphone or uh, an android uh, device from a browser right so you're not using the application that we were talking about just a couple minutes ago this is just in a browser right this is just your mobile browser um, and you'll notice that it's going to look very similar to the interface that you uh, have when you open up the application that you download, um, whether it's during alpha beta testing or once the application is completed. 
Um, so you'll have kind of a seamless experience there on your mobile device. So you'll notice a list of tickets, very familiar. Um, you can tap into a specific ticket. You can tap back uh, to the ticket uh, table view. You have a choice of viewing the, um, the ticket views that you've created. And then you've got the option to create new tickets here. So all the basic functionality is in place in this web view. Um, and this is what, again, this is what we're leveraging in the new mobile applications that you'll get from the App Store. They'll show you this web view, but they'll overlay some additional functionality uh, that's native or, or uh, running code that's running actually on the mobile device. Um, and specifically, one of the key differences and, and one of the key changes in sort of your experience as you're using either this mobile web view or the mobile applications from the App Store is that the mobile applications from the App Store unlock the ability to do push notifications. Like I mentioned earlier, that's not there today in the alpha version, but that's one of the key reasons why we're putting effort into getting you those mobile applications in the App Store so that you can um, leverage push notification technology, which basically just means you get a pop-up on your phone that says new ticket created, new ticket assigned, new update on ticket, those sorts of things, to keep you connected and allow you to stay up to date on the status of the tickets in your help desk, right? So, that's a quick look at the mobile web view. That's something that we completed during the spring as we targeted the transition away from the older mobile applications. We wanted to make sure you had a way to interact with your help desk. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is, is one of the other things that we completed uh, over the course of 2021. So let's take a look at the new uh, user portal. So that's what you're seeing here. This is a logged in view. We've got a couple ways that you can access the user portal. Um, these aren't really new since last year, so we made changes to the authentication mechanism last year. So this would have been something you could have seen last year at Spice World, but I'll just briefly cover those things anyway. So you've got the ability as, an, uh, as the IT Pro to configure three different modes for authentication. We can actually look at it so you're not just hearing me talk about it. If you go back to settings and go to your organization and then click on user portal and kind of scroll towards the bottom Oops, there we go, user portal. You see the portal authentication mechanisms way down here. So um, one of the mechanisms is to allow guest users to create tickets, so that requires no authentication. The default method is email authorization, which means that the user has to enter their email, and then they get a magic link emailed to them, which is just a login link. They click the link, it takes them directly to a login view, and that's what you were gonna, I'm gonna show you here today. And then we've still got Active Directory, which uses a authentication handler, which is just a piece of code that runs on one of your Active Directory domain controllers to allow your users to authenticate locally within your environment without passing credentials to Spiceworks. So those are the three methods. And like I said, we're gonna focus on the email authorization method, um, which we've had in place um, since last year. So the, what's changed is that we released a refresh of the user portal um, interface and so you'll see some similarities between this interface and the the new interface that's currently uh, in beta testing now that we'll show you I'll show you that last here to kind of save some of the best for last so the interface should look very familiar to your end users it's just been refreshed and uh, again using that new framework that we're transitioning over to so you've got the ability to view existing tickets you can um, type a response you can submit that new response as an end user, and then this is going to be visible to you as the IT pro on that ticket. Same kind of functionality that you would have seen before. And then your users have the ability to submit tickets, and this, this interface will support our custom attributes or custom fields as well. So if you add custom fields, you can make those visible, just like you had been able to previously. So a lot of the same functionality, they've got the ability to, to load up and uh, view open or closed tickets and search if they've got a lot of tickets. And as Siddharth mentioned earlier, this is something that we hope to expand on as we go forward. So we wanted to get just the base features in place as part of this rewrite and then collect feedback from you guys. And um, so please do let us know, even today, um, let us know, take a look, check it out, see how you think things are going with this portal interface and if this looks the way that you need it to, if there's features that are missing, those sorts of things. So that's the user portal. And then like I said, um, kind of saving the most recent work, the, the best for last. So this is the older tickets interface um, and probably very familiar to you. 
And I'll switch over and, and you'll see now, you should have access to this as well. There's a toggle available if you wanna opt in and check out the new interface. You just go to the settings link and it's right here at the top. Or if you're already viewing settings, you just tap on um, general settings. You can flip on the alpha here. And once you do that, if you go back to tech tickets, you'll see the new tickets interface, which looks very familiar. It looks relatively similar to that reports interface that we showed just a few minutes ago. And you can uh, uh, check this out, take a look at things. I'll, I'll give you a quick look here. So uh, one of the things that's different is there's a, a left-right paradigm here instead of a top-down paradigm. So as you tap on a ticket to open it, you'll see it loads um, uh, kind of a, a right side view of the ticket, which expands all the way across. So you can see the ticket history here and then the list of interface, uh, uh, the list of um, attributes that are available for you to make changes to the ticket. When you've finished making changes, you just go back to view this, the list of open tickets again. We've got search functionality already in place today. Um, this view is paginated. We may eventually do more of an infinite scrolling or lazy loading me mechanism to allow you to view um, and scroll through tickets more easily. But uh, pagination is what we've got right now. We'll see if that works for everybody. Um, and then also uh, have the ability to create new tickets as well. So that's already implemented as well. A lot of this you'll see is very similar in, in a lot of shared functionality between this desktop browser experience versus the mobile browser experience. So that's a quick look at the new interface, the mobile web view, and the portal. I'm going to speak about some of the awards and recognitions we have received. So uh, the work we have been putting in through has been recognized and uh, software reviews recently launched their 2021 IT Service Management Emotional Footprint Awards and Spiceworks Cloud Help Desk was named as one of the champions out there. The reason we, we're bringing this up is because this Emotional Footprint Award uh, their evaluation is based on authentic users who give their ratings based on their emotional response and there are no bots involved or any sort of a convincing way to put some products up in the list so it's a hundred percent genuine authentic uh, user feedback based uh, awards which are given and we're really happy and excited that uh, we have been ranked as one of the champions and we just wanted to share it with you guys and hope to make into other lists in the future as well as a top product for you all. Okay, so yeah, so let me talk a little bit about the performance of the application, how that's changed um, over the course of the last year since, again, since Spice World last year. So, you know, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we we had an intention kind of part of the way through last year to, to cut off the use of our old framework and move towards uh, uh, somewhat of a re-architecture and so um, I'll use a metaphor that, that we've used in, in years past with different applications at Spiceworks, but some of the work that we did over the course of last year is, is kind of like swapping the wheels out while the car is moving down the highway, that sort of thing. So um, over the probably the early part of, uh, of 2021 and into the summer, um, we did some work to, to move from an older version of Rails up to Rails 6 and up to Rails 6.1. Um, and that specifically was done to enable multi-DB support. So that's a, that's a really specific thing. So why am I even mentioning that? So multi-DB support, the reason we wanted to um, get to the point where we where the application could, could use multiple databases or use a database read replica, is we wanted to take some of the strain off of the primary database and allow for a larger user base to use the application. Again, part of that strategy of trying to enable as many of you as possible to migrate from the legacy application over to the cloud all desk application. And so probably you're naturally kind of, trend, your, your eyes are kind of pulling over to the right. So what are these graphs, right? Um, so we had months of preparation to get to the point where you could kind of see the behavior that you're seeing in these graphs. These, these represent speed improvements and they represent in, uh, specifically speed improvements during peak traffic or, or high traffic periods. So you'll see here, um, on the top graph, this is uh, just a snapshot of how things looked uh, before, during, and then immediately following a, a quick period of transition where we enabled multi-DB support uh, for, uh, as we were testing and trying to get this out into our production environment. So you'll see uh, across the top there, that was the load on the database, or the kind of the service that that's the, serves as the back end of the database. You can see that 
it was close to 100% utilization uh, prior to the change. And then after the transition, we're down below 20%. Um, and you can see the other line that was very close to 0%, that was our, uh, that was our secondary database or the database read replica, which was uh, prior to the transition, just not really being used. And so uh, what does this translate to, right? So utilization, that's interesting maybe, but um, how does it affect me, right? I'm, not, I'm the guy using the application. Who cares about your CPU utilization? You can see that in the bottom. So the bottom is latency on one of our um, kind of core routes of the application. So that translates to while you're using the application, how quickly does data get returned to your browser when you're trying to access more ticket data, or you're trying to create a new ticket, you're trying to load information about your existing tickets, those sorts of things. This is a, one of those specific routes. And this is an overlay. You can see the difference between um, a day where we had the read replica in place and then a week prior when the read replica was not in place. You can see the peak traffic period overlaid there. So, that lighter gray uh, line represents higher latency um, on the week prior, and then that, that blue line indicates latency um, on the week where we had the read replica um, in place. So you can see it's much, it's much smoother. So even during high traffic um, in the morning, which is, is typically kind of Monday through Friday, um, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., somewhere in that, in that time frame is typically where we see the largest amount of traffic in the uh, U.S. time zones. And you can see uh, that's that's really kind of flatlined that latency, which is a good thing. That means requests return much more quickly and are consistently returning quickly, regardless of how much traffic is on the application. So this is something we're really proud of. This is a lot of work, and this is something that happens in the background that maybe you guys don't really see um, until it goes out. You might start, you might kind of notice oh, something. Parts of this seem a little bit faster. Some areas of the application seem a little bit snappier. And we hope that that's gonna continue and that this is something that we can build on as time goes on and we transition to that newer framework, that newer web front end framework um, to continue to make use of this technology to ensure that the app is very responsive, feels fast and, and feels, uh, feels polished for you guys. So yeah, if, uh, we're, we're here to answer any questions, any feedback or any sort of uh, thing which is niggling in your mind and you wanna ask us, so feel free to uh, shoot us questions or anything we me and ben both are out here to answer you guys thank you all it was a really good session yeah thanks for coming out um please do send us your questions and and like we mentioned um if you're interested in that alpha for the mobile applications uh, ask us in the q a or just shoot us a message somehow just um, try to get a hold of us you can get us on on community as well. Um, and we can make sure that you get the information you need so that you can get your hands on that application. And then, you know, also like we showed, uh, go flip on that toggle and check out, go to the go to the settings area of the application the, of the Cloud Help Desk and flip that toggle on. And check out and let us know what you think of the, um, the web interface for tickets. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, how's everybody doing? I think we're live for Q&A time. Well, helps if I unmute myself. Uh, I see a ton of great questions already in there. Uh, some I think we covered already, but if people still have questions, maybe ones for us to still hit up. Uh, where, where do we want to start? Is there anything... Uh, actually, I'll grab one real quick, and Ben, you will know this, I believe, offhand. Uh, so Ben Diaz actually asked, is there a size limit to the upload JSON file? And I know there is, I just don't know what the limit is. Yeah, there is a limitation. So the, um, the best place to go to get all of that information is there's a document on the support site that walks through everything. I don't think I actually showed it um, in this, uh, in the last few minutes here, but I, I showed it um, on the, on the session on Monday uh, and, and kind of go through the details. But to specifically answer that question, I think that the effective upload limit is somewhere around 500 or 600 megabytes. And uh, if that's a frustrating answer, I'm sorry. I think it's it, it a little bit depends on a combination of like when, like when it's uploaded and what the actual file size is and like how, you know, how we're testing it at the time, we can kind of adjust it on the fly. Um, 
But I think if if you're over like 500 to 600 megabytes, uh, the upload may fail or the the file processing may fail. And that's yeah. documented in the uh, in that document. Yeah, and I just threw a link for those of you who are following along in chat to the uh, the support section for uh, CHD in there. One down, 500 to go. Yeah, what else we got? What else we got? Uh, actually, here's one. Uh, Tim Roberts, longtime listener, not a first-time caller, actually. Uh, I still have the legacy mobile app. Will the new mobile app override it or just auto-update? Uh, yeah, so the, the new it's a new separate app. So you will not get a auto-update when that new one comes out. And in fact, um, you can test them side by side. So. Uh, let me share. I was actually going to share this anyways. Let me share the like the quickest way to get to those. Almost like um, I set Ben up for it. Mobile apps. I think I think I'm sharing. I think we're good. Can you? So yeah, hopefully you guys can see a slide that says mobile apps alpha early release. Um, those are the two. That's the shortest way I could get the links for you. Um, for Android, so the everything I'm going to say right now is true for both Android and for Apple iOS stuff. Um, for Android. Um, you can uh, you can access both the old application and the new application, same for iOS. Uh, what's different about the two is that uh, right now on the on the Google Play Store, you can just search for Spiceworks Help Desk and you'll see the new application. It'll say something like early access testing or something like that. Or you can just use this direct link. Go to community.spiceworks.com slash r slash 4516. That'll take you directly to the Play Store and you can get the Android application. For iOS, you need this app, this, this link to get to iOS. You can't search it in the App Store um, right now, but you will be able to in the future. And so in, in both cases, you can load the new application side by side with your existing application. So you can kind of test it separately and you don't have to worry about, am I going to lose access to the old one or, or something like that? Um, and then eventually, um, uh, you, you know, you do a device restore, you get a new device or something like that, you won't be able to use that older application, but the new application would be available in the app store uh, once we get past testing and stuff like that. Yeah, I also, just, oh, go yeah. on. Yeah, there's one question by James, uh, like nine people have given a thumbs up, like if we, are still use, if we are still using the desktop help desk, is there a support page or a support team to help with the migration to CSD? So basically we did a session regarding migration to the CSD, I'll throw a link to that and also share resources with you all so that uh, all your doubts are clear regarding that. And you guys can reach out to us, there'll be various community topics pages uh, where you can uh, give us uh, your recommendations and suggestions and any ways which we can assist you or support you in the migration process. Yeah, uh, worst case always, you know, you can go to slash support, you can do support at spiceworks.com. Also just want to call out, I think Bruce just posted a link to the migration uh, document in there, which uh, actually includes a video that uh, Ben just recently put together. This sort of does a step-by-step -step on the migration process. Mm -hmm. And we added timestamps in there. So if there's certain aspects of it, you really want to just move forward to, yeah. uh, you can quickly. Yeah, there's a YouTube video where, which you can refer to. And that's always handy. Yeah, let's see what else we got. Uh, is there a connector for inventory? Um, that's a question from Josh Heimer. So uh, there's 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 a couple different answers depending on what exactly you're you're asking. Uh, so I'll try to cover what I can. So um, for inventory online, which is the cloud version of inventory, uh, there is integration, kind of a light integration between inventory and help desk. So you can connect or or relate your devices with tickets. So uh, you can do that from both from both sides. You can from the inventory side, you can. There's a tickets tab while you're viewing a specific device and you can like open a new ticket and relate it to that device. And the same thing on the cloud help desk side. It's not there yet in the new version and the alpha version, but the existing um, older version of the tickets interface, you can relate devices to tickets there. Um, so as far as um, if, if maybe the question is about uh, migration and the legacy application and stuff like that, um, there's not a way to like migrate your devices uh, out of the legacy application up to, to inventory. Um, the pathway to, to move over is just to deploy the, the, the agent, which is the primary way to get devices into the, into the new inventory. And somebody asked a question, which is kind of on topic, but I'll, I'll say it as well. Um, somebody asked a question yesterday, the day before, um, 
the, the there, if you're familiar with the legacy inventory, you know that it was a combination of device scanning. So we would do like remote queries for remote WMI and SSH and stuff like that to extract device information and put it into the inventory. It's a combination of that scanning and then also agents. So there's like a legacy agent and uh, there's not an upgrade path or like a, a way to you know, just, just push a, a, an update to that older agent. So the inventory cloud version, um, called inventory online, you just need to deploy a new agent. So you could remove the old agent, you can you can leave the old agent in place if you want to run them both side by side, the legacy inventory and the cloud inventory as you're, as you're testing things out. So hopefully that covers most of the inventory related migration and connection kind of things, Josh. What else we got? You see a lot of Sorry. people asking questions about whether the features that they had in on-prem would be available, be it through inventory or the cloud helpers. So since you have guys seen through the session and the previous sessions that we have done, uh, we have made significant improvements to the feature request and updates that you guys asked for, and we are continuously working on it. So watch out for the product blog to catch up on new updates that we'll be bringing on to our tools pretty soon. There's a question here too about uh, from Darnell about uh, auto refresh. Um, that's that's like coming very soon. That's near the top of our list. Um, getting the refresh mechanism working. I think there's been some issues with it for quite a while now on the existing tickets interface in Cloud Help Desk. Um, and so the new interface that we're that that's going into Alpha testing now, um, which it was covered. We just covered it a few minutes ago. But uh, you can flip it on here in the general settings page. Um, or you can, if you're if you're not an admin on your account, if you're a tech role, um, you can go to the employee administration tab there um, and turn that on for your techs if you're an admin. So sorry, that's confusing way to say it. Admins have to turn it on for techs if, if they're a tech role. So you just have to go to employee admin and edit each user and say, I wanna turn on alpha for this user. And so you can turn it on for your colleagues. If you wanna prank them, you know, see the new interface suddenly, uh, you can turn it on for yourself using this toggle. Um, <laughs> Or you, know, or you could be nice and let them know that you're flipping them over to the new interface. And uh, that's, where we'll, that's where we'll take care of this auto-refresh uh, functionality coming soon. Uh, and just as they're looking through, I just wanted to let everyone know I threw a link to our feature request system in chat. Uh, so you know, if there's features there you've been really wanting, make sure to upvote those, or if it doesn't exist, add it to it. Uh, there's quite a few in there though. And that's sort of, you know, I think Sid Hart talked about this earlier. That is one of the first places we're looking for two things. Uh, first is when we're building a feature, like right now we're doing the new ticket view. We're looking to see, hey, what are the, some of the features that people are asking for there? So it helps us edit things when we're in that specific area of a code base. The other is just looking at core features. Like I know one of the big requests we often get is like the SSO with Google Apps. Uh, so this is something we're always paying attention to as we're starting to build out our, I hate to say roadmap because we, we do adjust it based off of feedback. But as we're looking at what's next, what's coming up, these are these heavily weigh into that. Yeah. Uh, there's another question that fits exactly what you were just talking about, Sean, from Brandon, uh, asking about scheduling reports. That's not in there now. Um, I think we talked about this uh, uh, over the last few sessions, if you've watched any of the sessions, but so I'll repeat it just in case you missed it. Um, the uh, kind of in terms of roadmap and that sort of thing, we've been going through and kind of doing an initial version of things. Reports is not an exception to that. So last year we did reporting interface. Um, and so scheduling and PDFs and you know, having things automatically emailed like the legacy application does, um, that's not off the table, but it's not in there right now. So um, so yeah, like Sean said, go, go to the feature requests, add a feature request or vote one up if that's out there, uh, letting us know that you want us to add that. And then uh, our plan is to kind of come back around to these things. So we'll come back around to reports, we'll come back around to the user portal, those sorts of things, just based on feedback, based on the need uh, that, that we see via feature requests and stuff like that. Uh, or he asked a question, uh, have you thought about two or more assignees? Um, we don't have anything in progress for that. You can use CC users to, to kind of involve multiple people on the team, um, but we don't have a way to add multiple assignees. So same thing, go, go feature request that if, you, if that's something that you need. And let us know kind of, um, 
you know, what's the difference between what we have today and, and what you need for multiple signings? Like, why do you need multiple signings? How will you use that? Um, how does that kind of factor into kind of your workflow? Uh, you know, be descriptive, let us know so we can kind of understand and so that your peers, you know, the other folks that are using the cloud alt test can also see like, yeah, I need exactly that too. See. going through things i have another session i need to run to in a second so i may have to leave you in ben and Seth hearts super capable hands uh another question i did see come up and we get this from time to time in fact sid and i were just talking about this before the session uh hipaa compliant yeah. uh, you know we are very clear that we are not we do point that out in our faq that said the question we'll always ask is why are you looking for HIPAA compliance? Are you actually putting patient data into your ticketing system? Is it just something you need on your checklist? Uh, let us know more about it because we may be able to better answer that. We do uh, do, uh, what are they called? DPAs or whatever the data, the data protection um, kind of uh, contracts and things like that, but we do not do HIPAA compliance specifically with Cloud Help Desk. Yeah. Also, there is this question regarding uh, these apps that we have launched for mobile, both iOS and Android. Can we use Face ID to log in and would there be any additional features in the mobile? So uh, we have just done the alpha release of it and we're working towards expanding the functionality of it, be it through Face ID or be it through your Apple Watch. So we'll be working on these things now since we have it in alpha now and we can progress from here. So watch out for those as well. Yeah, and I know we need to, to finish up. Uh, I think our, our session actually ended, but we're still here. The other thing I'll just say, uh, and Ben and Sidhar said earlier, feel free to reach out to us. We, If you go to community slash support, you're going to find the areas there. There's a discussion forum. We have great members like Mainstrike, uh, who loves to answer questions sometimes before we can get to it. You know, Brendan, Craig, RJ, uh, we have IT pros who also work our support system. So we try to help everyone out as quickly as possible. I think that's it. See you all in the next session.